So let's start by talking about what a carcinoma tumor is. These are neuroendocrine tumors that can be that can pop up all over the body, but they're commonly located in the forehead, midget, and hindgut regions. These are extremely rare tumors. They only affect about two people out of ten thousand people. And what's so unique about these tumors is that they secrete these peptides or things like hormones like serotonin or um, some things unique to it, chromogranin A. They secrete things. And so let's compare this to something like colon cancer that doesn't secrete anything. Once the patient has surgery with colon cancer, it's really hard to track the patient's outcome post-surgery. With carcinoid cancer, you can do that because there are tumor markers that are secreted in the blood and in other places of the body where you can do simple tests to follow the patient's post-surgery. And so this is what my study was basically on. Looking at the carcinoid tumor markers, and there are several tumor markers, but the three of interest are chromogranin A, pancreas fatten, and 5 hydroxy acetic acid, which I'm going to say 5 HIA. So chromogranin A is the most commonly used diagnostic marker, and like I said before, because um, the carcinoid tumor itself secretes it, a simple blood test can be used to assay and um, look at this marker in carcinoid patients. Pancreas statin, we really don't know much about it. All, all that we know is that it's a derivative of um, chromogranin A, and you can also do a blood test to look for this marker in carcinoid patients. But 5-HIAA, this is a breakdown product of serotonin, and like I said before, serotonin is secreted by the carcinoid tumor. But 5-HIAA concentrates in the kidney of um, carcinoid patients, and so you can do a simple 24-hour urine test to look for, the, um, to look for, to look for that marker in the so in, our, um, in the clinic that I work at, it's a team of um, physicians, and they have carcinoid patients that they do surgery on. So for my research, I wanted to hypothesize that um, surgical reduction or removal of the tumor will decrease these tumor markers in carcinoid patients. So this is an IRB approved study, and we identified 225 patients with carcinoid tumor, and only 126 patients had information to be included in our study. And basically, we pulled charts and um, looked at an electronic database to see, you know, things that were pertinent to our information, like lab reports and things like that. The patient demographics, we had a total of 126 patients. 52 were male and 74 were female. The average age was about 58. And the majority of the um, tumors were located primarily in the mid gut. There were some in the foil and some in the hind gut. Other, um, just, refers to regions other than the gastrointestinal tract and unknown is place that we really didn't know where the primary tumor was located. So this first chart is talking about percent change in the tumor markers and basically what I did, the y-axis of percent change. And what I did was um, took the raw values pre-op and post-op and converted it into a percent change. And so the dark black line The dark black line is the zero line, and the points that lie along that line indicate that there is no change. Um, below the black line is a negative number, that means that the tumor markers decrease. And above the black line, that means that the tumor markers increase. So looking at this in numbers, so you can understand what's going on, we broke this down. We looked at greater than 50% decrease, which is what physicians want to see post surgery. And then we looked at 1 to 50 percent decrease, which is still pretty okay. Um, we looked at greater than zero increase, and we also looked at no change. And from this chart, we see that not as many patients um, have a greater than 50 percent decrease post-surgery. Even though it's a pretty good number, we would like to see that number go up. But majority of the patients post-surgery did have a total decrease in marker levels. So that is very interesting and very um, important to have. This is looking at the tumor markers, and just for time, I looked at chromogranin A only. But this is looking at the tumor markers in the context of debulking or surgical removal. So looking at less than 90% tumor debulk, let's pick a point. This point here is um, point, about 0.2.75 on the pre-op, which is on the x-axis. And so looking at it on the y-axis, we see that it is about 2.25 post-op. So between those two numbers, there's not really that much difference in the number, that much change between pre-op and post-op value. And also, this is a logarithmic scale, so you can see the numbers there. On the bottom scale, this is taking out more than 90%, more, greater than or equal to 90% of the tumor. And looking at this point, let's see, 
still free app is about 2.75, a little bit less. But post op is about 1.25. So whenever you take out more, the, the basic take home message of this graph is as you take out more tumor, you see a greater difference and a greater drop in the post op value. And that's something that's also very interesting for surgeons and physicians as well. Um, survival post surgery. Basically, what I really wanted to look at in this slide was looking at the tumor markers and seeing that there was a change between any of the tumor markers between the group who's alive and the group who's deceased now. So out of the 126 patients, only 11 of them died, which is a very small number. Um, and those patients who died only died, um, they died about 9.5 months after surgery compared to an average of 21 months. We're getting to where the money's at, the tumor markers. Looking at uh, pancreas stat and PKA and 5-HIAA, we don't see that there's much difference in tumor markers between the alive group and the deceased group. But looking at chromogranin, we see that there's a great, a big decrease in chromogranin A compared to those who deceased. So this, I mean, there's no statistics done to see if this is of any statistical significance, but it's definitely a point of further study. So in summary, Basically, um, what we see is that following a um, cytoreduction or a taken out tumor, there is an average decrease in, in tumor markers, and that is what we want to see. And the goal of surgical cytoreduction is to remove at least 90% of the rate of the tumor, so you can see a significant change in the tumor markers. And chromogranin A as a prognostic indicator should be studied for future research. Is there any questions?